How's it going everybody? Hope we're all doing alright today. Back out once again with a brand new video. And today I'm going to be talking about the skunk ape, which is a Bigfoot type creature that is seen in the Florida area in North America. And I've got some pictures to show you that claim to have caught the creature on camera so yeah if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about please stay tuned to find out more Whenever I make these videos, wherever I go to do my filming, I like to create, you know, a bit of ambience that is appropriate to what I'm talking about. And sadly, today, I can't quite make it to the Everglades in Florida. So, the dreary, dull British countryside will have to suffice, I'm afraid. So then, Florida seems like quite an unusual place where you would sight a Bigfoot type creature. You know, Bigfoots are generally associated with this, the more sort of coniferous forests of the Pacific Northwest and uh, heading up into Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia, places like that. But no, they are seen in Florida and seen in the Everglades. And for those people that don't know what the Everglades is, it is a very large area of swampland. And for a reptile enthusiast such as myself, I would be in my element in a place like that. You've got alligators that live there, Burmese pythons, cottonmouth venomous snakes, snapping turtles. It's reptile central basically. I think it'd be absolutely brilliant there. And then added on top of that, you've got a, a Bigfoot type creature wandering around in there, even better. So where does the name Skunk Ape come from? It's quite a clever nickname really for a Bigfoot type creature. Because we've spoken about this before in previous videos, that uh, Bigfoots seem to have infrasound, which is a sixth sense that we don't have. A lot of people where they have their encounters, they report smelling this disgusting rotten egg, sulfurous type smell. And, you know, it makes you wonder, can Bigfoots emit some sort of odour in order to deter us? Just like skunks do. Now the way that a skunk smells, it's a little bit different uh, as far as we know. Skunks do not have infrasound. Skunks will basically emit an odour. Um, and kind of like what a cat sprays. It's very similar to that. And this odour, these scents that they secrete, uh, they contain uh, sulfuric based compounds called thiols. And that's what gives them such a pungent, disgusting smell. So yeah. But as I was saying, people report uh, before they see a Bigfoot, before they have an encounter, this disgusting sulfuric smell usually precedes it. So, you know, it's either some kind of infrasound ability that they have, or, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe Bigfoots are picking up skunks and scrubbing their armpits with them. You know, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe skunks are like Bigfoot aftershave. Who the hell knows? So then, these pictures that I'm about to show you all, I'm sure people that are obviously interested in Bigfoot like I am, have probably seen these before, but obviously for the benefit of the doubt, for those who haven't, who aren't, 
uh, this is a bit of a backstory on these pictures. So if I get the story right, uh, these pictures are 20 years old, which I was actually quite surprised at. I thought they were a little bit more recent, but yeah, 2000, they're called the Mayaka photos. And they were submitted into the Florida Police Department from a retired woman who didn't give her name. She preferred to remain anonymous. And um, she enclosed a sort of handwritten letter in with these photographs and talked about how her and her husband, they were retired. And their, their backyard was basically the Everglades. She had been uh, leaving food out for what she believed just to be some you know, kind of animal, maybe even a skunk. And uh, the food was always being taken. And it got to the point where she thought that maybe it was some kind of bear that was taking this food. So it was leaving quite a mess. So one evening, she obviously braved the, you know, eve, the, you know, the night time and managed to you know, catch this creature rooting through the food that she was leaving out. Had the flash on her camera. And I'm sure you can imagine and appreciate the you know sudden shock that she probably felt when that's what she saw on her camera screen. So when you look at these photographs, you know it almost looks like this thing is grinning at her. Now it's well known if you you know if you're into your primates and stuff, a defensive facial feet posture of the great apes is to bear their teeth like that. It's the way of showing rivals, this is the armour that I'm packing. You know, proceed at your own risk. So was this creature warning her, don't come any nearer, otherwise I'm going to attack. With having said that, one of the naysayer sceptical arguments is that this is an escaped orangutan from a private collection or maybe a zoo and it was running free in the Everglades. Now a swampy tropical subclimate like the Everglades does support invasive species. The Burmese python, like I was saying before, that's been in the Everglades for over 20 years and it has decimated a lot of the local wildlife. <coughs> Excuse me. So that argument is very possible. Now, when you look at the face of the creature again, it does bear a resemblance to what is known as a flange male. Now, with orangutans in a you know a group of them, you will have one dominant male, and because of the sort of you know production of testosterone that will be going through you know his uh, bloodstream because of all the females that he has to mate with. They grow these kind of skin protrusions on the side of their face, kind of like a silverback gorilla, similar to that. You know, so there is that argument. But again, I ask you to look closely at these pictures. That's an orangutan, and that's that. Orangutan, possible skunk cape. I don't know, people. I know I'm biased, but I don't think it's an orangutan. It's, like it's the wrong colour, for a starters. Another argument that the sceptics put forward is that this is some kind of bear. Now, to my knowledge, Florida does have a small population of bears, that being black bears. They're not seen often, but they are there. And, you know, if you look at, you know picture of a black bear the condition of its coat very fine you know, it's very smooth and this thing whatever it is is uh you know it's very shaggy it's very unkept reminds me of a sort of um, a horse tail but it's very matted very matted fur um so yeah and also as well bears have very long snouts they're what are known as mesocephalic animals. And unless this thing is a bear, 
that was born deformed, I can't see in the face it having a long snout, whatever this thing is. So I think I'd be quite happy to rule out the bear argument. One thing that is very sort of outstanding about the case of the skunk ape is that if you go onto YouTube, if you type it in skunk ape on YouTube, you'll come back with quite a lot of, you know, alleged captures of them on video camera. You know, they're only phone cameras like what I'm using, but it still evidences that. Now, and some of these videos are quite striking, you know, like with the behaviours that are exhibited by these alleged skunk apes. It's shown them, you know, sitting sort of knee deep in swampland, hacking away at the base of trees, probably looking for roots and nutrients and things like that. And, um, you know, once obviously they realise they've been spotted, they usually stand up and the person filming takes off running. You know, a lot of people cry hoax, hoax, it's fake, it's, like it's made up. Again, you know, we know that things have been hoaxed in the past. You know, we did the Loch Ness Monster video the other day, and that was the greatest hoax of all time, in my opinion, pertaining to cryptozoology. But I'll tell you something, if these people are going out into the Everglades, which is, like I say, a very dangerous place, very, very dangerous place. There's a lot of wildlife that can kill you out there. Not to mention the elements themselves. You know, it's, it's a boggy swampland. We're not made for that kind of environment. If people are going out there and hawks and this stuff with just basic camera phones and a Bigfoot suit, it, I tell you what, give somebody a pat on the back if they're brave enough to stand knee deep in pristine Everglades territory. You know, when there's alligators and snapping turtles, you know, potentially swimming around. And they're stood there in a Bigfoot costume. Fair play to them. You know, if that's the Hawks, then well done them. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't do that, I'll tell you that for a fact. And I'm pretty confident with reptiles. But you won't catch me doing that. So, you know, as usual, you can make up your mind what you think. And, you know, I've given you the pictures giving you the stories. Me personally, I think the skunk ape is about as real as it gets when it comes to a Bigfoot type creature. I think those photos are genuine. So yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there now for today guys. Um, if you made it through to the end of the video, thank you for watching all the way through to the end. I massively appreciate that. And uh, yeah, please leave a comment if you have any opinions on this like I do. I'd love to know more. And uh, yeah, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't, share the video on your social media. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all further on down the line. Bye bye. If you look at pictures of a black bear versus this, whatever it is, you know, black bears are obviously. They have very fine coats, you know, very smooth condition to their coats. And this thing, you know, it's very shaggy. It's like a matted horse's tail. That's what it reminds me of. And um, bears, obviously, 